Welcome to Book Club Tutorials, a show where I, Stephen Barr, take you through a tutorial based on or inspired by a book which I'm currently reading. This time we're looking at Unity in Action by Joseph Hawking. I will show you how to create a card game known as Pairs or Concentration or Match Match or whatever you like to call it, but I'll be calling it Pairs. It's a game where you start with all cards face down on a surface. You then turn two cards over and check if the cards match. If they don't you turn them back around and if they do you keep them turned around and try to find the next pair. Are you with me so far? Good. Now let's get into the tutorial. The first thing you will need for this tutorial is some images. You can create these any way you want. The only thing I recommend doing is saving the files as a PNG. This way they will work better with Unity as sprites. I created mine using Photoshop, but you could just as easily use Paint and get the same result. What you need to create is four unique card faces, one card back, a background and a start button. It may also help to ensure the background image is 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. Once you have the images, we can create our new project. Open Unity and name the project Pairs Select 2D and choose the folder location. Once you've done all that, click Create Project. Now we have our project and the first thing we should do is create some folders to store our assets. Right click, select Create and click Folder. We'll be needing three folders, one for Scenes, one for Scripts and one for Sprites. Once that's done, open up your Sprites folder. This is where we need to store those images we created. To do this, open the folder on your PC that contains the files and simply drag them from that folder into the sprites folder in Unity. As you can see, they will appear in the project view. They are also recognized immediately as sprites because we are working in a 2D project. Then we need to save the scene, so go to file and click save scene. Save this into the scenes folder and call it scene underscore 001. Right. Let's start making the actual game. Go back into the sprites folder, click on the background and drag it onto the hierarchy. This will act as the background to the entire game. To make sure it stays in the background though, we need to adjust the Z position of the transform. So set this to 5. If we switch to 3D view in our scene view, we can see that the positive Z values are further from our camera. Therefore, setting it to 5 places the background further back. Switch the 2D view again and to continue, select the camera. We want to also alter the Z position of this, so change that to minus 100. And for the actual camera component, change the clear flags to solid color, change the background color to black and change the size to 5.4 so that it fits the size of the background perfectly. Next, we want to create one of the cards. So go ahead and drag one of the front faces onto the scene and center its transform position, then drag the card back onto the scene also. It should be in the exact same position as the front of the card. In the hierarchy, drag the back onto the front of the card. It should then be indented in the hierarchy and this means that it is now a child of the front face and therefore it's attached to it. Then click on the front face again and rename it to main card. The card I have is also too big, so let's resize it. I've changed the X and Y scale both to 0.5, which looks fine. If your cards are different, you may want to mess around with them to get the size just right. Just ensure that you only change the value for the main card and not the back card. And when we play the game, we'll be clicking on the card. To do this, we need to add a box collider to the game object. Ensure main card is selected and click add component in the inspector. Click physics 2D and then box collider 2D. Next I'm positioning the card in the default starting position on the lower left corner. Change position X to minus 6 and Y to 2.5. Once you've done that, click on the card back again. We need to make sure when the game loads that this is, sh this is shown first. So, we need to change its Z value to minus 1. 
you can see how this looks again in 3D view. Now you'll want to open the scripts folder. Right click on the folder and choose create C sharp script, then name it main card. Click on the main card game object and drag the new script onto the inspector. This means the script is now attached to the main card and so any code we write in it will also be applied to the card. So let's go ahead and write our first bit of code. Double click on the script to open it in the editor. It will have start and update methods in it by default but we don't need those so you can go ahead and delete them. Then type in serialize field private game object card underscore back. Serialize field is used to allow us to edit this variable in Unity's inspector. Another way to do this is to make it a public variable. Then type public void on mouse down and inside if card underscore back dot active self then card underscore back dot set active is false. So this checks for when we click on the card and if the back of the card is active we set it to be inactive which essentially makes it invisible and reveals the front to us. Save this new script and go back to Unity. Click on the main card and look at the inspector to the right and there's a new section of the card's back. Drag the game object card back over to the inspector and attach it to this variable. Click play on the game and try clicking on the card and it should now reveal itself. And save the scene again at this point to make sure we don't lose anything so far. We have now made it so that we can uncover the card but we also want the front of the card to be randomized. First back in the main card script, type private int underscore id then public int id get return underscore id. We won't use the id right now but it will be key later for comparing cards and checking for matches. After that we need to create a method that can change the sprite. So type public void change sprite int id sprite image and inside underscore id equals id and get component sprite renderer dot sprite equals image. So this will get the sprite renderer component and changes the property of its sprite. Save the main card script and go back to Unity. We want to create a scene controller that we can use to run the game. It will be used to add multiple cards to the scene and place different images on the cards. Right click in the hierarchy and create an empty game object. Rename this scene controller and reset its position so that it's in the center of the screen. We also want to create a scene controller script to attach to this. Create another script and name it scene controller, then drag it onto your scene controller game object. Open this script next to edit the code. First thing we want to do is type in public const int grid rows equals 2, public const int grid calls equals 4, and then public const float offset x equals 4f and public const float offset y equals 5f. These variables represent how the card will be generated on screen. Two rows and four columns. Then the offsets are the gaps between each card. Next we have serialize field private main card original card and serialize field private sprite images. Add back in the start method next. So type private void start vector3 start pause equals original card dot transform dot position which gets the position of the first card and we can then use this position for the rest and type int numbers equals 00112233 now as you see here i've added in 44 don't do that that was a mistake that i'll correct now in a minute numbers equals shuffle array numbers which is a function we will create in a minute Next we have for int i equals zero, i less than grid calls i plus plus. And then inside we have for int j equals zero, j less than grid rows, j plus plus. Main card card, which creates an instance of our main card. And we have if 
i is equal to zero and j equals zero then card is equal to original card else we have card equals instantiate original card as main card so if we are on the original card we keep it and use the original card otherwise we instantiate a brand new card so follow this with int index equals j times grid calls plus i and int id equals numbers index and then card dot change sprite id images id this will set the image and id of the cards displayed then we use the next bit of code to set the positions which is float pause x equals offset x times i plus start pause x and float position y equals offset y times j plus start position dot y and then we have card dot transform dot position equals new vector 3 position x position y and start position dot z now we've finished with the start method but if you look back a bit we still need to create the shuffle array method so outside of the start method type private int array shuffle array int numbers then inside we have int new array num equals numbers dot clone as int and for int i equals zero i less than new array dot length i plus plus and int temp equals new array i int r equals random dot range i comma new array dot length then new array i equals new array r and new array r equals temp return new array so that's quite a bit but what this does is it will shuffle the array and return the new array in a random order save this script and go back to unity check the inspector of the scene controller and our script now has space for the original card and some images so drag the main card into the original card space then set the image number to 4 and press enter. We will now have 4 spaces numbered 0 to 3. And drag the sprites into these slots. As you can see now I have encountered an error which is what I mentioned before with the problem in my code. I go back to my script now and correct this by removing the 4s I had entered previously. Now, when you hit play, the cards all appear on screen and they are in a random order and you can click to reveal them. You will notice we have two of each card type. Now we need to track when cards are clicked and if the player has got a match. Next up, we create another empty game object. Center its position and rename it score text. We are going to use this to display the user score on screen each time they get a new match. So click add component choose mesh and select text mesh. We will need to edit some of the information on this component too. Change the text to say score colon zero. Change the font to Arial, then make the font size 100 and change the X and Y transform scales to 0.05. Changing the font size and the scale makes the text clearer and less pixelated when displayed in game. Finally, position the score text in the top left corner. You can either drag and position this or alter the position values on the transform component. Now we will go back to the main card script. We need to create a new method to cover the cards again. So type public void unreveal. Then inside this we have card underscore back dot set active true. Now anytime we call this method, it will cover the card's face again. Next we have to edit the scene controller. Let me just split off the code here to separate this new code. We want to check each card when it is revealed and we will only allow two cards revealed at a time. So type private main card, which is an instance of our main card class and call this underscore first revealed. Then private main card underscore second reveal. We also need to store our score, which is private int underscore score equals zero 
and then type serialize field private text mesh score label public bool can reveal and get return underscore second reveal equals null public void card revealed main card card and if underscore first revealed equals null then underscore revealed equals card else underscore second revealed equals card start coroutine check match check match is a coroutine we will use to verify if the selected cards are the same it will also be time to show the cards for a quick moment type private IE enumerator check match and if first revealed.id equals second revealed.id and else yield return new wait for seconds 0.5f then back in the if statement type underscore score plus plus score level dot text equals score colon plus underscore score then in the else section continue with underscore first revealed dot unreveal and underscore second revealed dot unreveal unreveal is the method we created in the main card script that is used to cover the selected cards again after this we set both selection variables back to null so we can use them again make sure to save the script at this point go back to the main card script again so we can change a few things at the top create an instance of the scene controller script by typing serialize field private scene controller controller then change the if statement inside on mouse down to include and controller dot can reveal then add controller dot card revealed this inside save the script and go back to unity if you click on the scene controller game object the script in the inspector will now have a new variable of score label go ahead and drag our score text object into that then if you click on main card we also have a space for our scene controller so drag that over too then save the scene and click the play button as you can see we essentially have a fully working game now if we don't find a pair the cards are hidden again and if we do find one they stay revealed and in the top left corner we can see that the score changes each time you find a new pair Okay, we now have a fully functional game, but when the game finishes, we don't have the ability to restart the game again. So the first thing we need to do is add a button. So drag the reset sprite onto our scene. Then add a circle collider 2D to it. We can use this to allow for clicks. Change the scale and position of the object and place it in the upper right corner. Lastly, we need a script for the button's functionality. Go to the scripts folder, right click and create a C sharp script. Name this UI button. Then select the reset button and drag the script onto it. Double click on the script next to open it in the editor. Type in the following serialize field private game object target object serialize field private string target message public color highlight color equals color dot cyan and next we need some methods we have public void on mouse over sprite renderer sprite equals get component sprite renderer and if sprite does not equal null then sprite dot color equals highlight color this changes the color of the sprite when we hover over it indicating to the player that we can click it next type public void on mouse exit and then the same as before which is sprite renderer sprite equals get component sprite renderer and if sprite does not equal null then sprite.color equals color.white and this changes the sprite back to its original color when the mouse is no longer hovering over then we have on mouse down and we want to transform dot local scale equals new vector 3 0.4f 0.4f and 1.0f this is making the size of the sprite bigger when clicked 
Finally, we have on mouse up. We reset the button size first with transform.localScale equals new vector 3, 0.3f, 0.3f, and 1.0f. Now, these values may differ on yours as your buttons may have a different local scale. So just adjust those to suit yours. And then we have if target object does not equal null, then target object dot send message target message. So this is used to call a method that's attached to the game object. So save the script again and go back to scene controller. When in scene controller, we will create a method that restarts the scene. First at the top, add in using unity engine management. Then to create our method type public void restart scene manager dot load scene scene underscore zero zero one or whatever name you used for your scene. Save everything now and go back to Unity. Click on the reset game object and in the inspector, our script variables have appeared. The target object is our scene controller, so drag that across. Then we have target message. This will be the name of the function we want to call, which will be the reset function we've just created. Type reset in here and remember it is case sensitive. Save the scene and let's see how our final game looks. If you play the game for a bit until you find a match, then click the start button, it will reset the game. And that's it, we've completed another game and another tutorial. Hopefully you've learned some new things from following along. I'd like to thank you for watching and if you found this useful, please share it with others and subscribe for more in the future. You know, like this Space Invaders video, or maybe this first person shooter tutorial? I'll see you next time.